In this lesson, we're going to look at the formal recording of number sentences, and we're going to look through the steps and the processes that will take you to actually getting your child to using those symbols and numbers to actually write down what those thoughts are in their head. So the first step really is to introduce your child to the symbols, and you want to obviously introduce the symbols of adding, subtraction or subtracting or taking away and equals and you want to show your child those symbols and you want to talk through what they actually mean and you're showing them that this is adding this is your one more this is your all together this is your adding putting something in making the number bigger and this is your subtract subtraction sign this is your taking away this is making the number smaller this is making the number less this is making everything something actually physically to be taken away. And this is your equal sign. This means the same as. So if this is your calculation, this side needs to be the same as, and that's what that equal sign is telling you. So I would go through the process of going through those symbols and actually do play some games with your children. Things like uh, magnetic numbers are great for that. You can give them the symbols and mix them up and ask them which one is the symbol for adding, hide it away, what symbol can you guess? I'm going to tell you some words, can you guess, guess what symbol I have in my hand? So I might say, well, it means the same as more. And when you use it, the number gets bigger. And sometimes I might say, all together, what would that mean? And get them to actually guess. And again, you're testing them on that vocabulary and making sure that they do really understand it. So once you're happy with the understanding of the symbols. We want to go through all the processes and the steps and we have talked about some of these before so it's a really good opportunity to revisit those before you actually start getting your child to formally write down what they're actually thinking in their head. So I would really start with the practical. I would actually get my child to make me a number sentence or I would actually provide one with, for them. And at this point, I would actually also give them the symbols. I wouldn't expect them to record using the symbols by themselves just yet. So I might say to them, first of all, can you read this number sentence? What does it actually say? And actually get them to verbalize it, get them to tell you that it's actually three, add one equals, and then get them to solve it. So get them to write their answer of four on there or draw their four cubes or actually get four cubes and physically put them on there, which is probably the best thing. Actually get that practical and this brought in where they actually have to physically go and get four cubes and they put their four cubes on there. I'm just going to draw them for the purpose of this. So there are my four cubes and that's my answer. And then I would actually record that for them and I would say, right, you tell me what I need to write. Oh, I need to write the number three, then I need to write the number one, then I'm going to write the number then I'm going to write the symbol equals and then the number four. And if you do feel your child is at this stage able to translate that visual or that practical representation, allow them to do it because if they feel that they're ready for it and you, you, you're happy with them to do it, I would, I would definitely push them on to that. The next one is you want to move on to the visual. So we're taking that little step further. We've moved from that practical setting up of a number sentence to actually getting them to create their own. So I might actually orally give the child the number sentence. I might say, well, this time I want you to record four take away one. What could you do? Could you show me pictures to do that? And hopefully your child will maybe draw something like this four and they're going to take away one and they're going to cross that one out or scribble it out or show something that's actually taking away. And then we would talk about how we would write that in numbers and symbols and we would show that again, that formal representation that we had four and we took away one and now we've only got three left. I would then move on to actually using those numbers and symbols together. And this is where your magnetic numbers, which we've talked about before, actually come in really handy because you can actually give your child a calculation and say, hmm, I was wondering what four and one more is. Could you show me that using your magnetic numbers? And actually allow them to get the numbers and make the calculation and they will mix it up. They'll mix the symbols up. They'll maybe get the numbers in the wrong order. And this is your perfect opportunity to talk through these skills of adding, you want to now introduce that idea that when you're adding, it doesn't matter what way the numbers go around. It doesn't matter. They can go in any order. You still get the same answer. And that's that perfect opportunity to discuss that with your child. Obviously, when it comes to subtraction, then you have to then 
tell them that this is the difference with subtraction because subtraction obviously does need the rule that the biggest number must come first. And again, you can show them that practically with objects as we've, show, as we've talked about in our subtraction videos. So once you feel that they're happy and they've made their magnetic numbers, maybe you do want them to actually start to use a number line to actually record. So you might get them to show the same calculation, but on a number line. So we're now getting those written methods um, starting to progress into the maths as well. So you might ask them, well, you've showed me that um, little number sentence. Could you actually now show me it on a number line? So you might ask your child on their blank number line to put their number four at the beginning, show their one jump, and they get to number five. And again, they can record that as their number sentence. Number cards as well, we've also talked about a great way of actually just introducing those number sentences, just like our magnetic numbers. You can even make plus and minus signs and equal signs as well, so they can actually lay them out on the table. And again, it's a great way you can even put it out on the table and mix it up and say, oh, I've made a mistake. Can you spot what the mistake is? So that they're really getting that firm understanding of where the symbols go and how they're actually used. And then finally, once you feel that your child is actually secure with all of those stages, they can do it practically, they can draw you a visual representation, they can actually start to use those symbols and those numbers in conjunction together. They might even be able to show you a strategy for working it out or calculating it and maybe use other different modes of, of different types of media to show you those sentences. Then now it is time to actually start to get them to formally record. I would actually start with a visual representation. I would actually give them a little calculation on the board and ask them to highlight what numbers they're going to need and highlight what symbols they're going to need and actually get them to do that before actually getting pen to paper. And I would actually wouldn't even use pen and paper, I'd use a whiteboard because it's a great way of just um, organizing those thoughts and really thinking through the process. So I might even just say, right, this is the calculation I want you to show me in numbers and symbols could you show me and obviously now your child after all of these stages has got a really good understanding has got a really firm understanding and hopefully they will be able to tell you that five plus one equals six and actually be able to record that once you've done that then you want to maybe then really start to foster that independence in your child where you can then introduce your number stories again and actually say, but this time I don't want you to draw any pictures. This time I want you to go straight into a calculation. What calculation would you do? And actually start to really foster that independence and allow children again to put that maths into context and into practice. And now that they have completed all of these, these stages, they should feel confident and actually recording in a more formal way. But again, it's all about practice and it's all about making that sure that your child is secure with the numbers and the symbols before actually pushing them down that road of actually formally recording. But after all of these steps are complete, your child should feel more confident.